Alias Clips is my new Max for Life device that brings to Ableton the functionality of what is commonly referred to as aliases, ghost clips, mirror clips, etc. So I'm going to show you how it works, but first I just want to show you it working. What I have here is four MIDI clips in the arrangement view grouped together inside um, one of these uh, Max for Live devices. So they're linked, and what's going to happen is that when I change the MIDI note data of one of these, all of the other ones are going to be updated with that data. This works in the arrangement view or the session view. And you can even link clips across both views. So I can move notes. Um, I can add notes, can delete notes, mute, mute notes. Um, I can do other things like uh, change the color, clip color, change the name. Um, I can change the loop braces. I can mute and unmute them, etc. So I'm just going to start off with a fresh copy of the device and uh, show you from the beginning how to set this up and how it works. So I've got a brand new copy of the device here. Um, you can have multiple groups of clips, uh, but the idea is that each copy of the device you have controls one group of clips. And uh, first thing I'm just going to point out is if you open the info view, I have descriptions of uh, what all these buttons uh, do here. The second thing is I've got this floating view window, floating window here, and when you click that, it's just going to float above the rest of what's happening in Ableton. And um, this is useful because this alias clips device, do it doesn't matter what track it's on, and actually you want to have it on a separate track just so it's not getting in the way of any MIDI streams you might have going on. So I'm just opening the floating window and um, I'm going to move to the tracks where my actual clips are. Um, so the first thing we got to do is actually add some clips to the group. And there are two ways to do that. We've got inherit and overwrite. So First, I'm going to select the clip, and as you can see, when you mouse over Inherit, it says Add Clip to Group and Inherit. So what it's going to do is get the MIDI data and the properties from this clip, and it's going to become the group's data. And so what happens afterwards is if um, I add another clip with Overwrite, it's going to copy that data to the next clip. It's going to overwrite this clip's data with the group's data. And what happens if um, I add another clip with uh, inherit after that? This clip's data is going to replace the group data. So these other clips get replaced. Um, if the clip doesn't have a name, there's no real way for me to actually have it so that these clips have no name either. They just come through as em empty. There's no real way around that. But um, that's how that works. If um, I'm just going to clear the group real quick just to show you what happens if there's no data here and I add something with overwrite. It's just going to sort of erase the, the color. It's going to say no data and there's going to be nothing in here. So after that, if I add something with inherit, it's going to copy the data there, and um, the data is going to be the group data. Um, so remove clip. I can obviously can remove clips from the group. So this is no longer part of the group, and then it's not linked to these other clips anymore. Um, so these clips are linked together, as you can see. And um, 
what you can see right now is that these clips are when I change the MIDI note data of one of them the other ones are getting affected um, that's because it's getting is set to update automatically and um, if I turn this off it, it becomes update on deselect and what happens there is that say if I make a lot of changes and I don't really need it to update every time I make a change I can just do a bunch of stuff and then when I deselect the clip it's going to copy the data over to the other clips okay and when it's set to update automatically everything is just going to happen in real time okay this next this reaction time here is actually the delay between when you change the data and when they're actually it's the data is copied to the other clips so this is especially true for the loop braces but um, if you make a lot of changes very rapidly it will only update once within the space of 200 milliseconds and so if I exaggerate this just to as an example I can do a whole bunch of changes and then at the end of the two seconds it's going to update and this is just so it's just if you don't want to um, you don't want Ableton you to use up unnecessary uh, processing to to be copying every change every time and also it will um, it will help out your undo queue also so I'm just going to reset that to 200 that's a, a good a good sort of safe value um, clear group clears all the data here um, un unlinks all the clips so I'm not going to use that right now um, add duplicates so when this is on basically what happens is duplicating any clips causes the duplicates to also become linked and be part of the group so you can see here it says amount of clips I've got five clips now because I've just duplicated that clip twice you can duplicate with control D you can duplicate with control C and control V to copy paste or you can control drag and um, all of these are still linked I'm just going to give it a name real quick okay so this is the amount of clips and this button called ping actually shows the user what clips are actually in the group so it's a bit more information than just knowing how many clips so if you ever lose track of what clips are in the group it shows you and it'll deactivate the flashing when you select another clip or you just turn the ping off yourself okay moving on synchronize um, these this column of uh, parameters is basically everything that's going to be synchronized across the clips and you can enable and disable these independently so if I disable name that means that my clips can now have separate names okay and if I re-enable name you're going to see there's nothing in here and um, that's because they're they have different names at the moment but what's going to happen is if I change the name here it's going to copy it across all the clips and they'll be synchronized again um, another way I can do that is say if I disable the name again and this goes for all the parameters that are synchronized and then I re-enable the name I could press sync clips and whatever clip is selected will copy its name 
across all the clips again. And I can change the name from here also. Just press enter to, uh, to output that. Clip color, I, I kind of recommend not turning this off. Um, partly because, um, just because having the clip color synchronized just makes things so much easier and it disables the ping. The ping won't work without the color. Okay. Because ping, this sort of way of pinging is just the easiest way to see what's in the group. So I kind of recommend um, having the color on all the time, but it's not necessary. Notes is um, whether the actual MIDI data is synchronized or not. So if I turn that off and change something, they're not going to be synchronized anymore. Okay, and if I do sync clips again after turning that on, it's going to sync them all up again. Looping is just whether it's set to loop or not. And I can change that from here. Um, can't change the amount of notes from here. It doesn't really make any sense. Okay, markers. Uh, markers is only sort of uh, only sort of works when it's not looping. So I can change this by typing a value. Markers is kind of difficult. It's kind of weird how markers works. It's a bit. I'm still kind of trying to figure it out. But loop braces are more important. That's just. Uh, it's just these. Decide what part of the clip gets looped. Muted is this. So most of the time you probably want to have this off so you can sort of mute these independently. But uh, it's up to, all up to you. And once again, you can sync clips. And uh, so they share the same muted status. Okay, and the last uh, last uh, couple things to explain is there's a, a slim view here. So if you have multiple copies of this device, you can sort of just um, sort of just shut them off to the side, just put them away somewhere. So they don't take up so much space. And uh, this last button is just going to take take you to the web page. It's going to open your default browser and take you to the web page for this device where I've got written explanations and um, also I'm going to have this video in there as well. Um, so just um, just uh, just explain some things that uh, some limitations and just show you first of all how these sort of work when you have more than one. So. I think it probably goes without saying that you can't have uh, you can't have a clip be in more than one group at once. So I've got orange group, I've got yellow group here, and um, if I try to add a yellow clip to the orange group, it's going to tell me this can't work. If I try to add an orange clip to the yellow group, it's going to tell me there that that doesn't work either. Okay, so it's just sort of um, it's just sort of common sense stuff. So a few disclaimers: um, you can move these clips around. You can have these clips in um, all in separate tracks. They can be in the arrangement view and the session view. Maybe I'll just show the session view here real quick, so I can um, add that into the yellow group, and you can see it has that uh, same MIDI data. But um, one thing that's not really possible to do at the moment is um, to move more than one of these at once. It's gonna, the device is going to lose track of the clips and um, the amount of clips won't update and uh, the, they won't be linked anymore. So if you move them, just uh, move them one by one. And if you have to move... Uh, a big part of your track at once, which it does happen. Uh, just try and just remove the clips first. Okay, then move them together and then just add them back in. You have to add them and remove them one by one also. It's not really 
uh, possible at the moment to um, to deal with more than one clip at once. I'm going to try and make it possible later this year, but it's going to take a lot of work. So this is just how this is now, and if this device gets pretty popular, I'm going to try and make uh, a next version where you don't need to have uh, one instance of the device for each group. You can sort of have them all deal with it all in one device. So next thing, just uh, yeah, don't have these clips sort of um, overlapping. It's not really going to get, it's not going to be very pretty if they're overlapping a lot. I think it might lose track of uh, of what's happening and what is mapped and what's not mapped. So don't have them overlap. Um, don't have two groups that are kind of identical. So it's kind of, um, it, probably nobody's going to do this anyway, but just um, two two groups that just have all the same properties. It's, just, uh, it's not going to get pretty because they're going to get confused. Last disclaimer is this, o this is only for MIDI clips at the moment. Um, there's not much that Max for Live can do with audio clips. But uh, if there's demand, I'll make a version of this device that can actually synchronize the audio, audio clip uh, colors and the name uh, looping, loop braces, and muted. I can do everything with audio clips except the notes. Okay, and if if there's demand for that, I'll do it. It's not it's not such a big deal. That's this one. Okay, another thing I just want to mention is that this device it kind of it adds steps to the undo queue. It's um, it's not really possible to have this device work without adding steps to the undo queue. Um, this is not possible the way Max for Live works with Ableton right now. But uh, on the bright side, if uh, it's also going to take take up your undo queue a lot, if uh, if you know just making this change, making these changes, and um, copying them all over your set is kind of uh, it kind of works out the same in the end. But just uh, bear in mind, I know a lot of people out there are kind of sensitive about their undo queues, but uh, just bear in mind it adds it adds a good amount of steps to the undo queue. Another thing I just want to mention that I forgot to mention earlier is uh, you can delete these clips freely also. If you delete them one by one, you can see the amount of clips here is going to get updated. Okay, but uh, once again, just don't delete more than one clip at once. It's, uh, it's kind of going to lose track of things. So that's pretty much it. Um, if you want to get a hold of the device, just uh, check out the web page. Uh, any feedback, let me know. Uh, there's probably a couple bugs still in there somewhere. Just um, just point them out to me and I'll, I'll do my best to fix them. Just one thing, this is not really a replacement for native Ableton alias clip functionality. Really, that's that would be the most ideal. But uh, people have been requesting this for over 10 years now and nobody knows if Ableton is going to implement it or not. I just tried to sort of uh, make the best work around I could, but it's still just a hack. You know, you can do a lot with it, but uh, just just bear in mind it's not. You can have to use some common sense, and it's not a replacement for what Ableton would be able to do if they actually decided to implement this function. So yeah, just uh, any feedback, let me know. Peace.